are with us Mr. Rajiv Menon, cinematographer and director. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, so, how do you think education in filmmaking really makes a difference? Because filmmaking is more of a creative thing. I mean, uh, technical education is different from you know imparting creative knowledge. So, how do you think that really helps? Well, you know, I mean, it's like saying that how can you teach architecture? I mean, um, there's a lot of uh, uh, study of creative spaces have really happened in the last you know 50 or 60 years that people have been concentrating on the screen uh, writing aspect you know and the big um, studies have earlier been in the areas of photography and acting people have learned that you know people have learned music you can turn around and say how do you learn music but the fact is that every language that you have has a certain grammar has a certain technique and you need to learn it to practice it and to get your grammar and syntax right. So filmmaking is no different, it's a language which you need to master. Writing a novel is very creative, but now we have so many creative writing workshops happening. So it's it's that synergy that is happening that people who thought everything was very cerebral in your mind is now they are now recognizing that you need to actually uh, streamline that process and break it down into smaller modules which you do and uh, you succeed. In. Off late, there's been a general perception that filmmaking is very exclusive and it's not available to everybody, it's expensive, it's, you know, it's, not, it's very difficult, you know, that. so how do you perceive that? You know, I mean, now you see, you have such a small piece and you're recording audio. I think what I, what digital has done is that it's created awareness. Everybody, uh, today the world's largest manufacturer of cameras is not Nikon or Canon, it's Nikon. No, so, what therefore, what, I, what happens is that a lot of people are doing that in their lives. Digital technology allows you to actually shoot and direct the film. And today it's theoretically possible to make a film within a lakh and a half of theoretically. But practically speaking, you can just tell a story, but does it have the bar factor? Does it have, can it bring people to the theater? Does it, can it be marketed? Is it part of a chain? That becomes part of the industry. But it's like saying that you can write a novel, but can you publish it and can you get people to pay for it? It's different. So, I think digital has made the industry accessible to a lot of people. But what it has done is that it's made monetization very difficult. So it has created more opportunity, but the way you can get money out of the industry has become more common. Digitization or part, I was talking about the getting access to education. So I'm sure getting into your college is very difficult. You know what I mean, right? I mean... Yeah, I think it's, in any case, premier institutions are going to be difficult. And uh, it's, it's nowhere near as expensive as, say, going and taking a medical college or going and joining a, a, a dentistry college. You know? I mean, nobody paid for education. Today, everybody accepts payment for education. Nobody paid for water, but everybody pays for mineral water today. Things that you took for granted some time back, you have to pay for it. So what has happened is film education has opened up, but it's something it's very expensive because you cannot create numbers in class. You cannot have a classroom of film with 85 people trying to learn how to make a film. Classrooms are 10. So since the numbers are small, the cost is higher. The teachers cannot pay attention. And just to listen to it, 10 people's ideas takes a lot of time. And then to supervise that and to see their work and to creatively guide them requires smaller classes. So it will and therefore, exclusive. it will remain expensive, not exclusive. You know, there will be more institutions opening up. And I think film education is today there was just one Pune Film Institute and Madras Film Institute. Today you have more than 20 institutions. So how important do you think it is for directors to propagate social issues through their films? See, Commercial uh, success compared to... No, I think uh, filmmaking is a medium wherein people go to hear stories. Activism, if you want to really change, you should be involved in judicial activism, you should be in journalistic activism, things of that nature. Because People go to two hours to see a film and then they quickly forget it. So even if you make a film about a topical issue or about a, a serious issue pertaining to exploitation of women, the caste, or dispossessed, or Maoist, or so many other things, 
what happens is the narrative arc that you have inside it and the character arc is what gets people interested. People are interested in seeing anything where there is conflict, where there is complication and resolution of a conflict. You know? And I think the, you cannot make, make all your life make films about love and marriage. So filmmakers should see uh, the need to get into better content or to have more relevant social content as a necessity. Because if you only make films about love and marriage, you get dated. So movements will keep coming, people get tired of something and they see something else. And you've seen that happen on television already. The Sars Bahu serials are today waning and something else is becoming popular. So uh, entertainment, unfortunately, is not a constant. It needs con continuous innovation of content as well as format. So, uh, personally, do you think uh, directors need to draw a line about how much technology they use in their films? It totally depends it on the content. Hard. If you want to create a film like Avatar, you have to create a lot of it in, in your mind and then you have to create a lot of it in post. You may not be able to create all of it in actual live shooting. So, why should there be a boundary line? You know? And the boundary lines between gaming and filmmaking is blurring. Boundary lines between creation and execution you know, is, is, is blurring. Boundary lines between how only one studio with a lot of money could make. I mean, now you have this access to the same image quality at much lower cost. So I think today, a lot more opportunities young people like me can come in and do something in the film industry. I mean, it's a great time to be in the industry. Can you talk about your biggest success and your biggest failure very briefly? I mean, I think biggest success or biggest failure is very difficult to say because I think that's judged by other people. You, you make everything with as much heart in it. Some becomes successful, some becomes failure. So, so I don't think it's uh, possible for us to speak for this. We need to speak.